Tonight, we've been looking at ordinary people with extraordinary physical and mental powers. But what separates superhumans from superheroes? And why is it that since the beginning of time, we've been obsessed with them and needed those caped crusaders? It is a basic human urge to overcome our limitations, to soar, to unlock powers hidden deep within us. And right now, superheroes are bigger than ever. It's really the golden era of, of superheroes. There's an explosion of Hollywood blockbusters, like the current hit Iron Man 2. But beyond the fun and the fantasy, superheroes have long provided a window into our national psyche. They're empowerment stories, and what's better than that? Look, I'm there! Screenwriter David Kep wrote Spider-Man. There are certain times and periods that for some reason lead people to really go to theaters, to pick up the comic books, to read about these people with special abilities. What is it right now, do you think, that that speaks to that. The golden age of fantasy is often when the society's going through a hard time. I think 9-11 and the souring of the economy have had a lot to do with it because the you know people want fantasy. They, they want to escape. Absolutely and you're escaping into a fantasy of success and omnipotence. And you're safe and you're protected. It is a fantasy that stretches back thousands of years. Superman is is really the modern incarnation of Hercules. Christopher Knowles wrote the book, Our Gods Wear Spandex. Humankind has always been fascinated by these deity-like figures. While they're still human, they have something special that sets them apart. This comes straight from the ancient world. Gladiators would dress up as their favorite god or hero. You would have generals that would pray to a certain god before they went into battle. So this is something that's very deep within ourselves, this need to transcend human weakness and immortalize ourselves. Every culture and every religion has its mythic heroes. Princeton University religion professor Elaine Pagels. You actually said that Jesus Christ in many ways was one of the first superheroes. What do you mean by that? Well, when people feel vulnerable, they look at Jesus who's going to come in the clouds and right all the wrongs. What could be better than a God who could come and do all of that? In real life, we often cannot overcome our obstacles. We cannot get justice. We cannot right wrongs. Artist and author Arlen Schumer says that behind superhero worship Hello, citizens. is a serious human need. Superhero stories, all heroic myth stories, teach us and tell us that it is possible, that you can do it. And we need stories to tell ourselves we could act this way. It's the ultimate fantasy that, you know what, you don't know about this about me, but I have the secret ability that all of a sudden will make me a superstar. Who doesn't want to feel that, you know, we're sitting on this gold mine of untapped potential and that, and that <laughs> right. if someone would just teach us how to unlock that, then we would be, uh, you know, happy and successful. While some scale buildings, dive under polar ice, or fly off mountaintops, to fulfill the fantasy, you don't need to be superhuman. Most people will say at some point in their lives they fantasized about having a superpower of some kind. My kids say it to this day, flight or invisibility. <laughs> what did you pick? I pick flight, particularly as you get older, you know, maybe your body feels a little bit heavier than it used to. Flight is awfully uh, hard to resist. And it's not just in movies or comics. Around the country, a new trend. Dozens of people are dressing up as superheroes to draw attention to themselves and to their cause. Meet Life. He hands out food on the streets. I see someone in need, I help them out. And then I'm up, up, and away. This month, photographer Peter Tangan is mounting an exhibit of those real-life superheroes. Now, really square the shoulders. Really. Including DC's Guardian. Legs apart, square to me like this. It immediately caught my attention that there were these people that simply embodied the idea of a superhero, but actually took it into the real streets and used it to try to make the world a better place. With a mask and a cape and a catchy name, they're just trying to capture that yearning so many of us possess to unlock the superhero within. This whole idea that you can become you know, the great figure, you can become the hero. Is everyone all right? We want to be looked up to as we've looked up to others. It's okay, your baby's fine. 
And I think that's a very important human motivation that goes back a very, very long time. Go get him, boss.